everyone, thanks for having me. Uh, I just wanted to get a pulse. What's everyone's relationship with, like, I guess, software engineering, data science, something else? So, like, software engineers, raise your hand. Okay. Data science. <laughs> nice. And something else. Analytics. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm a data scientist, product analytics type of person, uh, want to do more machine learning type of stuff. But uh, anyway, this talks about calculating sample size in your head. I'll walk you through experimentation since I figured a lot of you wouldn't know much about it. And also teach you like a couple cool tricks, like maybe something at a cocktail party or you know, uh, impress your boss in a meeting by calculating something in your head. So first of all, does anyone like dad jokes? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to give you a granddad joke. So it's <laughs> twice as good. Does anyone know how many seconds there are in a year? So <laughs> it's 12. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd. <laughs> Uh, does anyone know the real answer? I learned this from a physics professor. It's a uh, high times 10 to the 7, approximately. So anyway, <laughs> keep this in mind, that this kind of theme of like remembering some trick to do something. Uh, a little bit about, about me. Uh, I grew up in the South, so I went to Auburn, and that is the topologist sine curve under that. And I did my master's in math at UAH, and that's the cancer of a bag function or the devil's staircase. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> uh, I worked in supply chain analytics at Home Depot, and that is the full whip effect. I did consulting on Microsoft's Xbox Live Awards loyalty program. Learned at Galvanize from that guy, and that is an icon face under that, and did staffing a startup, and most recently was at Zillow and did experimentation. So I worked on about 50 experiments, have actually led the practice area there. And also, I am open to work, so hit me up if you know something. So tonight I'm going to talk about what do online experiments look like why approximations are useful, and thoughtly is cool. And I unfortunately won't have time to get to the appendix of like the math of why this trick works, but Matt, you can get with me after this. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason he was here. <laughs> experiment looks like you're comparing two things. You've got a treatment group and a control group. So you start with something simple. And let's keep it simple. I ran a lot of these experiments where all I was trying to do is optimize click-through rate. So uh, we call this click-through rate for your uh, control group and incidence rate. And so I might call that CTR. There's also a success criteria, so you might want to improve the metric of click-through rate by about 5%, and the statistical literature will call that minimum detectable effect. It's like, what's your threshold for success? And then you have the, the effect size times the click-through rate, and then add those together, and then that gets you what you're trying to achieve for the treatment group. So those factors determine what sample size is. And so yeah, incidence rate, minimum detectable effect, determine what your sample size is. And that ultimately determines how long it takes to run an experiment. It also is important because you might want to get like 
high test velocity and test a lot of ideas quickly. So doing that well is important. So I learned a lot about experimentation at Zillow and found I was doing these power analyses on a regular basis. They were all really similar. Uh, and also I had other projects I was working on, so I often was a bottleneck and just wanted to make my life easier and help my PMs more. Um, but yeah, practical aspect of this is just getting PMs to be able to gut check something quicker. Like if you can calculate this on the fly, that makes your life a lot easier. Um, and again, mainly I just want to share some cool plots later on. Okay, yeah, does anyone want to impress your boss? All right. So. <laughs> is uh, my grandpa. Alright, this is this is easy, right? <laughs> Alright, yeah, can you calculate this in a meeting with your PM? Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, almost. So this is the easier formula I have found. It's nice and pretty. It's kind of like pi times 10 to the 7. So P is your incidence rate, and MBE is your minimum detectable effect. Um, I was going to ask if anyone wants to try this out, but Matt told me don't do linear algebra in public, so <laughs> I have an example queued up. Um, so let's look at an example with 1% incidence rate, 5% uh, effect size. So you could go into this function and say like, okay, 1% effect size is one over 100. So when you invert that, it's 100. And then MDB of 5% is one over 20. So it's like one over 20 squared. So we've got 100 times 400 times 10 pi. So that's about 125,000. If you plug this into a statistical calculator, it's about 127,000. Or I'm off by a factor of 10, but anyway. Uh, the actual percent here is about 1.3%. So a key implication here, 1 over n, or sample size is proportional to 1 over your incidence rate, and it's proportional to 1 over your effect size squared. So a key takeaway here is like, take big swings, shoot for big impact, so you can increase your velocity. So what this might mean is if you increase your effect size by threefold, it makes you run the experiment nine times faster versus increasing your incidence rate by threefold, you run three times faster. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Assumes that developer time developing features is negligible. So I'm sure you're all happy with that. Um, <laughs> I'll jump into the notebook and show you some cool pictures. So sample size, this is what I started with when this is the actual surface of Michael Oh, thanks. This is what I started with. This is your trade-off, like a 3D shape of what incidence rate is. Uh, MBE and how it affects sample size. As you can see, it just blows up near the origin, so it's hard to see what's going on. So I ended up doing some log scaling on this, and also like just learned a little bit more with Plotly, and got, like, you can click a button, so I can manually play around with this and look at different parts of it, and see, so you can see here on incidents, this looks like approximately like 1 over x in the way it decays. And then 
MVP in the case of like 1 over x squared. Uh, but yeah, I found an example online where you can create a play button and rotate it around. So that's also something you can do to impress your boss. And let's see, there were some cool things about this. I learned that um, graphical objects in Plotly is really useful. I played around with some other libraries and couldn't get it to work. So like this best 3D function was useful. And then there's this other thing called scene camera, which was really sweet. So you can get these like different angles of the default setting of like, where it's, uh, where your eye is looking into the 3D plot. Uh, so jumping into like the actual error, so I found this example where I was off by 1%. This shows how far off my estimation is in general. And as you can see here, it's off by like 200%. So it might start getting not to be useful uh, when you've got larger incidence rates and larger effect sizes. So, but I did see like, hey, it's actually extremely good here at the origin. Like my error is less than 1% at the origin or as close as I can get to. So I zoomed in over here and found maximum error on this whole plot, zooming into like, you know, my upper bound for effect size is 20%, my upper bound for incidence rate is 20%, my maximum error is 25%. And you can find, like I did a little bit of uh, NumPy stuff to figure out like exactly where that was, and so it's fine. Yeah, incidence rates 20 percent, or yeah, that's the effect size. Anyway, uh, I believe I'm good there. How am I doing on time? 620. Oh, I mean, how much time? 30 to 6, you have time. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, I guess I can even take questions. Oh, 25. Okay, okay. I plan for 20, so. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Um, so, probably you already mentioned this, but so the minimum detectable effect is that like a percentage of the baseline. So, for example, like it's like a ten percent change if it's point one from the from the incidence rate, or what is the? You know, That's right. So, so the question was about what is minimum detectable effect. So over on this slide, if we're looking for a five percent improvement, and our incidence rate is 1%, then we're improving that 1% by 5%. Yes? Is this all free plotly stuff you're using, or is it their paid? Yeah, I'm, it's all free. Uh, let's see. I think I saw another question. Yeah? How did you obtain that prosecution? Uh, that's a good question. I saw when I was working that often if I change an effect size from like 5% to 10%, things would uh, go down by a factor of four. And I was like, why is that? It doesn't make sense based on the formula. So I just played around with the formula a lot. Um, I've got a bunch in my appendix here of why that's true. Um, a lot of stuff falls out in your power formula. So this is that scary thing I was showing you earlier. Um, but when you've got like your alpha of 0.05 and your power or your beta is 0.2, uh, then a lot of this simplifies and like your ratio between treatment and control group is usually one. Uh, a bunch falls out, so um, I, can, I can link you to uh, not exactly a derivation, but because I tried to prove this, I might want Matt's help on actually proving this limit as it, uh, you approach the origin, but uh, anyway, yeah, I won't go into all of these holes. Hey, yeah. So I saw the center machine, this is like most accurate, is uh, the small incidence rates too, right? 
Yep. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, so the question was about, did, do we have small incidence rates in practice? And when I was running these online experiments, typically the incidence rates were really low. It was like a click-through rate of you know half a percent or a percent, something on that order of magnitude. So this would work really well in those circumstances. Any other questions? And so it, and if I remember correctly, it underestimated or the sample size if you get further away from that, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the other cool thing about this, um, which I didn't hit on yet, was, uh, let's go to this one. Yeah. Thank you. 